again with another show it's another opportunity to talk to where we're not sipping tea but instead we are serving stew and tonight on the intellectual stew i have a special guest with me tonight my front my friend my partner my boy carlos tucker say what's up carlos what's up what's up what's up all righty all righty tonight we're going to talk about an interesting subject we're going to talk about the plot to destroy black families, the plot to destroy uh, black families. And uh, so I, uh, what I usually do every week, I try to uh, do a show that's kind of building. Now, let, let me tell you, uh, you see me, every time you see me, I do this hashtag on the path to better. And, uh, and what I like, and I like to try to uh, put it out there to talk about what better looks like. Now, I do have an overall objective. That's why you see me doing shows like on communication and shows on tough love and are talking about what better looks like and dating app. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take a holistic approach towards um, towards trying to better our communities. I am so sick and tired of seeing uh, our families decline. I'm so sick and tired of seeing uh, uh, what the institution of marriage, uh, it's so uh, diluted now. I'm, so, I'm just really, really sick and tired of seeing us losing when we should be winning. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a deep dive and go into history and go into uh, some socioeconomic, uh, take a socioeconomic view at some of the issues that we're dealing with. And hopefully uh, through time, I believe that we can, as intelligent individuals, can come together and concoct a plan uh, that will help us uh, get out of the current state that we're in. And I, I don't know about you, but I read a book by Jawanza Kanjufu one time, and it talked about the SOS uh, concerning black boys. And I think the state of emergency ought to be issued not just for black boys, but for our communities as a whole. So tonight, I invited my partner, uh, Tucker, to come on with me uh, after we had a good conversation this morning. I didn't have a guest. I was really going to do it by myself tonight. But um, he he was offering some good insight, and I know he likes to be perfect, so he's trying to pull up everything so he'll know where we're going. Tuck, don't worry about it. We're going to do it just like we did it on the phone this morning, okay? Uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to be quite all right. Marlon Miller, I see that you are on my Facebook Live. Let me tell you right now, you stay on topic tonight or I'm kicking you off. I'm being honest with you. No, that's my cousin, so I can play with him like that. <laughs> hey, listen, go to Disco 100 Radio on YouTube, if you're uh, in my live and you want to see what's actually going on in studio, go to Disco 100 Radio and uh, we'll provide, and you'll actually see the phone number a little bit later, we will provide an opportunity for you all to call in if it's something that's worth uh, calling in. But what we want to do tonight is we wanted to talk about the plot to destroy uh, black families. I mean, I know there are other wet white families, I know there are Asian families, Tuck, you hear me? I know there are every other ethnic group, but the one that I'm concerned about are black families. What you think about that? We definitely need to be concerned with the black family because that's most important to us. Okay. You know, exactly. I, I would love and I do love some of our other brethren, mm -hmm. but I love us the most. And that and you know, and that and it's key that you say that because it's Ironically, the world teaches us not to love ourselves. If you think of, you remember the the uh, the test 
or that they did with the baby where they put the white doll and the black doll in front of the black baby and the black baby chose what the white doll every time and uh when you look in the cowboy movie in the cowboy movie the the villain always wore what the black hat but the good guy always wore the white hat you know so it's always been an issue it's always been a, a problem uh that they uh, that has uh that has existed in our communities as far as as their portrayal of us so uh what i wanted to do tonight is i wanted to uh make sure that we can uh understand exactly where we come from because i believe in order to get where you're trying to go you got to really know where you came from yeah. And that's the sad part about it is it's so we're so comfortable in our right now that we forgot about our back then. <laughs> and if it wasn't for a back then, it wouldn't be a now. You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and, uh, and so that's where we are tonight. So listen, the state of our current condition uh, has roots. Why? Because life is not just about it. Watch this now. Life is not just about an event. But life consists of processes. We didn't just wake up and end up in one event where we are, right? But it took things throughout the years that helped us to develop where we are. As descendants of slavery and of its victimization as a whole, many of us are still suffering from its effects. Would you agree with that? I agree with it 100%. All right. So that's so, and it's kind of equivalent to ha having kind of a post traumatic stress disorder or PTSD or something along those lines because we went through a lot. 400 years of slavery is a lot, right? Jews went through Holocaust, but how long was Holocaust? What, a few years, right? A few years. Yeah. Ja Japanese, they got bombed in Hiroshima, but that was one day, right? But they still feeling the effects from that right now, right? Exactly. American Indians, they came in, the uh, population, well, white, white the mm -hmm. Europeans came in, and slaughtered all the Indians in the American Indians in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. Even in Pittner, Oklahoma, <laughs> place they used to uh, make bullets for World War II, the lead got in the water and started messing up the people in the city. Do you know that they paid to relocate everybody in that city? So Jews have gotten their just due. Japanese have been taken care of from Hiroshima, right? Right. American Indian reservations, you got Indians who are getting thousands and thousands of dollars because of what happened to them. People of Pittner, Oklahoma getting blessed. And here we are still waiting on 40, 40 acres with a mule. Yeah, but like we said earlier today. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm, I, now can, I'm going to say it because I, I made it up. <laughs> but I said earlier that I'm, you know, if I don't get in the disc, I want you to hear this as well. If I don't ever get my forty acres, and if I don't ever give me my get my mule, at least give me my dignity. Mm, I hear you. Because if I have my dignity, I have a foundation that I can build on. Exactly. But the sad reality is, is that so many of us have lost our dignity never had dignity, never were exposed to dignity. Therefore, we don't know who we are, so we don't have anything to build with. And some folks still don't understand what dignity is. Well, tell us what dignity is, man. <laughs> Having a pride about yourself, knowing where you come from, knowing where you're going, knowing that you have respect, being respected, um, just being treated right and being treated fair. Because you, you can tell people... Um, you know, I can't, I, 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 I can, I can deal with a per. I, I can't make a person respect me, but I don't have to deal with their disrespect. You got that right. And so many people don't, I, sad to, reality is that so many people don't even realize when they're being disrespected. Because they've never known respect. Okay. A lot of the respect that we know, we've been taught the wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our problem is that we really don't know. Okay. The sad thing about the family today is, and like the topic we discussed tonight, is the black family under attack. Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't even know we are under attack. Wow. We sleeping while the war is going on. Okay. You know, we, we sit back and we take it easy and we relax thinking that we're all right. Mm. When it's like the cyber threat that's going on right now with China and Russia, with the United States. They come in 
on our networks when they get ready mm -hmm. and do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And then stand back and let us do anything about it. Isn't that something? And it's only a few that will even acknowledge the fact that they've entered in into areas that they never should have been in. Wow. But the majority of the people still sitting back treating it like it's nothing. Wow. It's the same thing. Black people are sitting back acting like nothing is going on. So we can war. talk about crime and drugs, but what about what's happening with our families? Mm. That was a movie that everybody loved, regardless of what color, what ethnic group, the whole nine yards. And that old movie was Soul Food. Mm -hmm. And it depicted how the family was. Yeah. Even though they had troubles, they went through things, they had their drama, mm -hmm. the family still stuck together. Through it all. Yeah. You look at our families today, and I'm speaking of black families. 30 years ago, if my neighbor was hungry, I see about my neighbor. Yeah. They could come over, borrow some sugar, borrow some eggs, but today, a lot of people don't even know their neighbor. They don't even speak to their neighbor. Well, there, and there's a term, there's a term uh, called collective efficacy. Hmm. And we used to we used to practice collective efficacy. The term collective efficacy means knowing your neighbor hmm. and being willing to act on his behalf. And that's and and that's and and I was talking to my barber about that today. He said he's living in, been living in his house for four years, and he don't even know his you know he he really couldn't tell his name know his neighbor's name you know. And I was the same way when I lived in my house. You know, I mean even right now where I live, I don't know anybody or in, in in my complex. Not I know one dude probably in my complex. That's it. As far as knowing their name, I don't I can, I don't know anybody I can call and say check on something while I'm gone because I don't I don't really know my neighbors. I have Indian neighbors, I have black neighbors, I have white neighbors, I have all different, uh, but I don't know them and because i don't know them but family we should know each other family is the worst we were spoke we was speaking earlier today thinking, talking about thanksgiving mm -hmm. used to be a time of thanksgiving dinner the whole entire family came together mm -hmm. house full of people sitting around the table now thanksgiving you may have a few family members mostly friends mm. and it's a shame when we can sit down and have a meal with friends and strangers before we can our own family ain't that something well so but let, let's not let's not stay there too long let's let's go back to this the war because you mentioned something about you said earlier that that uh black people are in a war and don't even realize that it's a war going on so i want to really talk about the genesis of that war i want to talk about how that war was calculated from the beginning how the seeds were planted because like i said earlier life ain't about events it's about processes, right? You don't you plant in planting season, but you harvest during harvest season, right? That's you don't right. you don't get to experience the same thing in the same season. And part of that plan or that war was to emasculate men. And part of the way that you would emasculate men, especially black men, and that's what I'm talking about. It's emasculate the black man was to empower and elevate. The black woman. Now you're gonna make some folk mad. Well, I mean, I gotta say what I gotta say because tell the truth. Tell and, the th and the thing is, is because if you look at it in history, and we're gonna talk about it tonight, you know, because it was it was one quote that I read earlier today that really hit me like a ton of bricks, right? And when it hit me like a ton of bricks, that's really how this whole show kind of developed tonight. When it talked about how uh, that the slave masters said that something about how, and we'll read it in in it direct in a direct quote in a minute. But it says something to the effect that they can go to bed tonight and they can sleep comfortably because they have the black woman on guard working for them. Speaking of the Willie Lynch letter. Yeah. Now, let me put this, let me, let me drop this disclaimer out there. There are some people who say mm -hmm. that it's a false letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. It might be a false letter, but the ramifications are not false. And you can, you know, I understand you are all from academia and you smart and you, I get, I get all that. You got the dot letter, a couple of letters in front of your name and behind your name. I get, it. I got a couple behind mine too. But the, uh, but the thing is, is that even if it's a false document, we cannot discount the ramifications of what has taken place since then. Can we discount that? No, 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 we can't. Yeah. And there is that school of thought that said that Willie Lynch was a myth. Uh, I've done the research, I've read some. 
even if it was, my point is this. There had to be someone devious enough to sit down and pin the words of that letter. Yeah. Somebody. At some me. point. <laughs> At some point, somebody had to be, be... All right, so let's talk about several systems that have been put in place to emasculate black men. Uh, one was, during the Jim Crow era, the vagrancy laws. Mm -hmm. And the vagrancy laws basically said... You're, you're familiar with the vagrancy laws, right? Mm -hmm. Vagrancy laws basically said that if you were unemployed, then you go to jail. And so after slavery, during Reconstruction, there were when they just let people go, and we didn't get even. I mean, for a while, it was one of the richest times in history for Black people during Reconstruction because we had all the skilled labor in the country. So with that, we were doing very well. But they didn't like it, so they tore down places like Tulsa. They tore down all these places where we were thriving, right? Mm -hmm. So with all that being said, there were a lot still that didn't work or didn't have jobs, you know, because it, it, it was real. It was rough. So with that being said, if you didn't work, then the sheriff would put you in jail. And then once you were put in jail, then your services were hired out to the local uh, businesses and you would basically work for free, right? Put you right back into slavery. Okay, right back into slavery. So one was vagrancy laws. Another one is mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. Mass incarceration, uh, and during a 20-year period, the prison system swole from over three from 300,000 to over 2 million Mm -hmm. uh, of that 2 million, about 40% of that at least was black men. So if those were black men, those were uncles, those were nephews, those were grandfathers, those were fathers, those were men that were in the community that were uh, role models to little boys, to, for husbands, for wives, uh, uncles, for little girls, all types of things to represent a strong male figure in the home. But uh, during that 20-year period, as the prison population swole, there was a a mass exodus of black men from the community. You remember those times? Exactly, and they're still going on today. Okay. But my question is, was that by design? Yeah, it was by design. I agree with you one hundred percent. Yeah. You yeah, got a lot of people sleep that don't even know. Yeah. I mean, well, well, think about that. Uh, first of all, when you take away all of that free labor, <laughs> you got to replace it with something, right? <laughs> So the easiest way to replace it is to replace it with the prison system. And so when people realized that punishment could be profitable. Economic. Yeah, so, the, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but when they realized that punishment could be profitable, like for instance, it costs 40 plus thousand dollars to incarcerate a man for a year. But how much does it cost for a college degree to teach him how to read or put to get up and help him get educated, right? And yeah. it's easier to educate but they'd rather incarcerate. I told you I wasn't going to do no cliches. I didn't mean to do that, but that came out like that. It's, it's much one. easier to educate, but we, but, but the individuals would rather incarcerate because they want to try to control and they look at the economic corrections corporations of America, uh, Wackenheimer, all of these are privatized prison companies that make money off of punishment. All about economics. Yeah. So systems put in place to emasculate black men, vagrancy laws, mass incarceration. What about the welfare system? Hmm. Uh, it was for the original benefit, and a lot of people don't know and understand that the majority of the recipients of welfare mm -hmm. was not black. That's what. That's true. It was doing World War World War Two, right? <laughs> exactly. When the men went off to work, went off to war, then the government uh, put systems in place to take care of the women while they were. Men were overseas, and, and that's Franklin, where they stayed in the projects. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt had to come up with something. The New Deal. You know, but like always, there are good intentions and good ideas that are converted into bad. And, and talking about the conversion of the bad, yeah. that's when we started taking it. And then so as the system came in place, the system said, well, we'll take care of your children but if we take care of your children, it can't be a man in the house. Get him out. So at that point, to me, it looks like they're promoting the destruction of the family. Exactly. Okay. And in doing that, because once you remove the man, mm -hmm. then you have no family. That's true. You have no home. 
You have no neighborhood. You have no community. You have no society. And what did First Samuel 30 say about the, when David and the Amalekites? They said when the men were gone, <laughs> that's when the Amalekites came in and burned up the city, right? Exactly. And took the women and children away captive, right? Exactly. So systems put in place to emasculate black men, vac vacancy laws, mass incarceration, welfare system. Also, even though we, 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 we talk about Clinton being the first black president, I don't get into politics a whole lot, but that crime bill in 1994, mm. when he came up with that three strikes law, that yes. put a whole lot of people, and, it's, and it has caused him to come back and apologize. It has, because yeah. they look at how it has destroyed our society. It's, it's the, whether we get the credit or like or not, mm -hmm. you cannot get around the fact of the contribution of the black man to the world today. Our inventions, our thoughts, what we do, our labor, our intelligence, our desires mm -hmm. has driven the foundation of the wealth of this world. Yeah. It don't yeah. just go on here in the United States, it's all over the world. And and that's why, man, I'm, I mean, even with this show, I don't, you know, I could probably try to go and find some hot topics, you know what I'm saying, and mm -hmm. deal with some gossip and all those. But man, I would rather talk about some substantive things that's going to help our community as a whole, you know what I'm saying? Because I just honestly believe that the wool has been pulled over our eyes, man. You know what I'm saying? And so, and and what has happened uh, by happenstance is that we have become so functional in dysfunction hmm. that our dysfunction has become a new normal, right? And when you create a new normal and you start to operate in a dysfunction, then you're dis and, and you function in your dysfunctional, then you begin to confuse what, what's actually right and what's actually wrong. What the Bible even said, you know, if you don't think you're sick, you're not gonna call for a physician. Nope. But if we not if we're not sick, why is the prison population growing that like it is? Well, if we I, I mean these were talking questions. If if we're not sick, why is the disease rates going up and drugs happening like they are in the prison systems? I mean, if, if we're not sick, why is single motherhood so rising and the marriage rate is going down so low? Why are these things going on if we got it together? Yeah, the, the reason why we don't have it together, and I, I don't make some people mad, but it's the truth. At the end of the day, when you boil it all down, it's all about how we have been torn down and practically destroyed through our women. Ooh. Now, I put it out there, but the Lord knows it is true. You said we have been destroyed through, what did I say? Repeat that again. The They look at the power and influence that the woman has over a man. Wow. Okay. And that's been the number one tool that has been used throughout The history. primary tool. And, think about and, 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 let, and, and, let, and let me start reading this, and we can start breaking this down. Go ahead. All right, so I'm going to read some of the, the excerpts of this Willie Lynch letter. I didn't put it on the screen tonight. I'm going to read it. You can rewind it or whatever you need to do uh, real quick again. But it, the, the portion that I'm reading is dealing with the breaking process of the African-American woman. Mm. Uh, that's, what, that's what Willie Lynch, when he gave this speech, he talked about the breaking process of the African woman. Not African-American, I'm sorry, African woman. Uh, he said, take the female and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. It says, test her in every way because, here it is, she is the most important factor for good economics. Hmm. That's what it says. Then it says, if she shows any signs of resistance in submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bull whip on her to extract that last bit of breath out of her. Take care not to kill her, but because for in doing so, you spoil good economics. I'm talking about money. When in complete submission, she will train her offspring in the early years to submit to labor when they become of age. Understanding is the best thing. A little bit more. Therefore, we shall go deeper into this area of the subject matter. No, no, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Before we go. It said, 
if you don't do it right, you're spoiling good economics. Therefore, you must do it right. That's why you got to do it right. Yeah. Whether you got to use the bull whip, mm. you need, if you need to beat her to almost her last breath, but save enough life in her because don't kill her. Mm. Why? Because she's worth too much money to kill. Because she's producing offspring, and the offspring are going to be eventually free labor. Mm. Ain't had to buy him. <laughs> Ain't mm. had to bid on him. They had. She had that baby. And her and generation, how many of she has, that's all economics. And she's training them as we go. How much power has been given to the black woman and what is she doing with that power? And because what she does with that power has lasting ramifications. And guess what it's going to do? It's going to affect generations. And just like power, power corrupts. And in power in the wrong hands that is not understood and kept up under control can be very destructive. But the power was under control. But it was an illusion, it was an illusion of who was actually controlling the purse string or who's controlling the puppet strings. Well, what I think they looked at, when you go back to Adam and Eve in the garden, okay, look at the power and influence that Eve had over Adam. She did. And it was because of her. And Adam even told God, that woman that you gave me. <laughs> but the, her influence started back then. What they did was capitalize on that thought, that action, and built a platform to use it to destroy and tear down. Yeah. And that's what's been going on all along. And it okay. still goes on. And a lot of the women will get mad and upset and say, well, you know, that don't make sense. Then you got the skeptics saying, oh, they talking about that Willie Lynch stuff. Somebody had to take the thought of that philosophy Ain't that crazy? and make it diabolical mm. to see about putting it into practice yeah. where it became a reality. Mm -hmm. So it matters not if Willie Lynch exists, if he wrote it, somebody, somebody. took those words yep. and put them to practice. Yeah. Now, let's, let's read a little bit further. It said, therefore, we shall go deeper into this area of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the female. It says the N-word, but I'm just going to say black woman or black man whenever I see N-word. I'm not going to say that. It says we have reversed the relationship in her natural uncivilized state. She would have strong dependency on the uncivilized black male, and she would have a limited protective tendency toward her independent male offspring and would raise male offsprings to be dependent like her. Nature had provided for this type of balance going further. But what they said they did was we reversed nature by burning. Stay with me, y'all. We reversed nature by burning and pulling a civilized black man apart it said the N-word, and, uh, and bullwhipping the other to the point of death, all in her presence. By her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed. This is what they were trying to do, female ladies. This is what they were trying to do, ladies and gentlemen. They were trying to destroy the male image because with the male image destroyed, the ordeal caused her to move on from her psychologically dependent state to a frozen independent state. That's deep. She will raise her male and female offspring in reversed roles. Hear this. She's raising, this is the female, because in this, her husband was just torn apart and be, it was pulled apart and burn. They would tie, they would literally tar and feather him, tie his hand to two horses, set him on fire, slap the horses, have the horses pull him apart. She's watching this. And while she's watching this, she moves from her psychologically dependent state to a frozen independent state. And now she raises her male and her female offspring in reverse roles for fear of the young male's life. 
she don't want her son, oh God, she don't want her son to go through what her husband went through. And because she don't want her to go through it, want him to go her him to go through it, she tries her best to protect and baby him. That's what's wrong with a lot of them today. They're being babied. A woman cannot raise a man. A man will never be a man until he sees a man. Yeah. So today, uh, the women are raising their sons that they should be catered to. They should be taken care of. The woman should be taking care of them. They don't instill in them today that the man carries the responsibility. Jesus. And he is... I'm messed up right now, be honest with you. Oh, very messed up. <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm so messed up right here, man, because when I, when I read this, like I said, it says she raises him... In, she raises the male and females. And I'm not, I didn't mean to cut you off, so I'm going to finish oh, reading. No problem. Uh, she raises them in reversed roles for fear of the young male's life. She will psychologically train him. And this goes, I know you ain't going to be able to be quiet on this. You might well go and turn your mic on. Just, just, go, just don't cuss us out too bad tonight. She will ra psychologically train him to be mentally weak and dependent but physically strong. In other words, take the trash out. <laughs> Let's do it. Take the trash out. Open up the door. Uh, do all go wash the car. Cut the grass. Do all this kind of stuff. But he's mentally weak. He can't handle no stress. The sad, my dad, the one of the biggest things my daddy taught me as a man growing up is that a man is always in control at all times. I don't care. What, I love to play spades. Spades is one of my favorite games. And one thing about playing spades is you got to do what? You got to play the cards you dealt, right? <laughs> and that means if you got one face card, it ain't nothing but a jack, and the rest of it ain't nothing but telephone numbers. You got to keep playing that game. And guess what? You play the game realizing what, t t that you got a partner on the other side. But see, a lot of but a lot of women don't think like that. And I'm not discounting women because a lot there are a lot of strong women out here. Please don't. This is not understand. A lot of stuff that I say is not specific. It's general. So it's for the masses. It ain't just, if, if your shoe don't fit, don't put it on. But what she says is, watch this. What Willie Lynch says is, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak and dependent, but physically strong because she has become psychologically independent. She will train her female offspring to be psychologically independent. What, what have you got? You got the black woman out front. And the, and the black man behind and scared, and this is a perfect situation for sound sleep and economics. That's what Willie Lynch said during, during, during slavery. Well, a lot of them, they see the words and hear the words, but they still don't understand, and they can't relate that to their lives of what they're doing. Because the only thing they see and say is that I'm doing the best I can Ugh. with what I have. Yeah, that's what and they say. And this is all I know to do. Yeah. Because they have lost contact in what a man should be. And now they want to blame it on the men and the women said today that you cannot find a man. The reason why you can't find them because they ain't been raised. They ain't been raised. What's that? Boy. This second week in a row, we messing you up, huh? <laughs> no, this is this where we at. Can you? Yeah, barely, but I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hear myself. Can you hear me? We did it up. So basically, what I'm what I'm getting at is that uh, I don't what I don't understand about the women is that they raise these boys to be somebody they won't be. <laughs> Revenge. I'm say it again. They raise their sons. Wow. To be so handicapped, depending on them, but they'll tell you quick how they can't find a man out there. Mm -hmm. That's the pleasing to them. And, and and they think that that is right. And the best thing to do, because one thing, and I, I know I'm going to get in trouble with this, but it's the truth. I hear you. One thing that is hard for a woman to admit is that she ever made a mistake. Mm. Because their escape is always to throw the blame on the man. And not understanding, like, the evil theological thinking of the individual that penned those words. Is also true today, back then and today, 
because what he was trying to do in essence too was tell them y'all talking about having slaves the slaves was making money was a money making thing mm -hmm. why would you go out and destroy something that's making you money yeah. let's do this thing a little bit more intelligent. That's what he's saying. And the best way to reach them has always been through their pockets. Yep. And that's the only thing that they understand and know. And, and so that's when he brought up the problem. fact about money, he got their attention. Their attention then went to how can we put this into practice and use it. Yep. And the weakest one, like always, was the woman. And you got to understand context. And because I mean, <laughs> and here, cause here, here it is right here. And this go this this the this is what made me do the show. This part this one statement right here is what made me do the whole show. It says before the breaking process, we had to alertly be on guard at all times. This is what Willie Lynch is saying. Before the breaking process, talking about breaking the female Negro and female uh, the African. That's what they said. Before that breaking process, we had to be alertly on guard at all times. Watch what he said now. But now. We can sleep soundly, hmm. for out of frozen fear, his woman stands guard for us. Hmm. Now, the, the the mere fact of those words, and those are the most, Best that thing. one phrase is the most treacherous like and that. dangerous <laughs> in that entire letter. Ain't that something? Now we can sleep. Now, that's deep. But the thing that women have to come to grips with and understand is, and a lot of them say, well, I don't understand and know what y'all really talking about mm -hmm. and what that letter is really saying. It's because of their lack of understanding and accepting what they have been taught, not willing to open up and learn more. They are okay with the way they've been tricked, used to confuse and tear up the home. Because the number one thing women love to say is the man. Mm -hmm. Well, it may be the man, but you're the one that letting them stay home and play Nintendo while you go to work. <laughs> you're the one that letting them drive your car, get tickets and get DUIs and everything else <laughs> while you working. Then you want to be mad when you come home, find out he ain't done nothing but caused a whole lot of trouble. Then you get rid of him and you bring in another one. All at the same time, your children are watching you bring man after man. Every month, they got a different daddy. But the thing is... Who's fault is that? But the thing, Who's fault is it? But the thing is, the thing is, and you're right, mm -hmm. they, it says that they are in a frozen, psychological, independent state. Denial. Because it, uh, uh, well, women and black women, I got to say this. But, the number one problem with their man, if they sat down and talked to him, even with their son, is that they fail to realize and don't want to admit how they play a key part in the life of tearing them down. Yep, I do. I do. I was at, I was at Walmart one time, and uh, it was this young lady. She was a young mother. She might have been twenty twenty one, and. Um, she was just jerking this little boy around. I mean, just snatching him every which way and all this stuff. I said, girl, quit jerking that baby like that. She said, don't say nothing to me. That's my baby. Da, 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 da. I said, yeah, I won't say nothing to you. I said, but you're going to raise him to hate everybody to look just like you. I said, because when he get older and he starts slapping a woman around, he's going to see your face from slapping him around. <laughs> you need to stop doing these boys like that. Because sometimes you, you, that's why you try to, you know, try to put that fear in them. At an early age, I didn't really want to put fear in my son. I, the fear that I wanted to put was the one in the Greek that means respect. But one thing that I could put in my son that my ex couldn't do is I could put that dog in him. Mm -hmm. And now that he's older, he appreciates that dog. I mean, I had the disco, I had the best, the sweetest text that I've ever had in my life Saturday night when my son and I got back from Florida. Cause he he got a chance to go out of town and work with me at a dealership for a few days, and he really never really knew what I do. You know what I'm saying? He just knows that I take care of what I need to take care of. But he got to hang out with me for a couple of days, and when he hung out, uh, uh, at the end he texted me when he got home late that night. He said, "Dad, man, I'm proud of you, man. Stay the course and keep on doing what you're doing, man. That meant a lot. You know what I'm saying? Because I had to make my son hate me for a season to teach him how to love me to an extent. That, 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 because I wanted to put that dog in him, man. I wanted to let him know. Let me tell you something. The, man, and I, I, I said this earlier today, man, and I really mean that. 
of terms. I'm on this path to better. And uh, and honestly, man, right now, Paul said in, in Philippians 4 that that I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. And I'm the most content that I've ever been in my life right now. I mean, I'm cool, man. I am not, I, I don't, it's not much that can stress me out. I'm not stressing about any money. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I still drive that little Honda, but I'm, if I want another car, I can get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just in a in a good place right now, but it took me having to be broken. It took me having to be hurt. It took, I appreciate you because during that time, I mean, it was time that I was struggling, man, and you would pay for a meal or you might just cash out me not knowing what I was going through. And that's what brothers do. And that's what, and honestly, that's what men do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we're taught and we do it with no stipulations. We do it with no expectations in return, you know, but that's because we've been trained by other men, right? There's not this gulf or this gap because when you start talking about this frozen, psychologically independent state, that's because you're operating in a capacity that you weren't designed to operate in. Well, I was raised in that era when mama would say, don't let me tell your daddy. <laughs> you know, a, 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 a little bit different from you, I learned and was taught through fear. This whole the... thing that with this letter is about applying and using fear. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that it is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom and understanding. That's what it says. If you don't implant fear, our children don't fear their parents today. The parents fear them mm -hmm. because the children stand up and tell you, I've seen some well, that I, I, this one boy I got out of jail, I hated to do it, didn't want to do it, but you know, I, I did. Mm -hmm. I stood there and watched him slap his daddy to his knees. Wow. Now, think about it. We're afraid to go out in the streets today. It ain't the old men. It ain't the winos. It ain't even the junkies on the corner no more. It's the little teenagers. It is. They're bad. Now, they, but, the, you, but you know what, man? The teenagers still respect men. Hmm. If you're a man, they respect you, bro. I mean, yeah. I went in Stonecrest Mall one time. And it was several, four, five little boys dreaded up, you know, in, in a little in a little uh, circle. And one of them cussed like a sailor. Mm. And I said, whoa. And this was several years ago. I said, which one of y'all cussing like that? And when I made eye contact, I said, follow me. I said, let me holler at you. And, man, I isolated and pulled him by myself. I said, man, let me tell you something. I said, how, I said, how old are you? 15. Why are you cussing like that? Uh, I said, do you? I said, your mom and daddy know you cuss? No, sir. Sir. So that means you got respect. Man, I don't let me hear you out here cussing like that no more. And and when I broke him down like that, and I do this a lot. I do this at football games. My, when my son was in high school, I used to go to his football, my daughter's football games. I would go to those games, and I catch kids cussing, and, and I talk to them, man, because I'm not afraid of them. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I'm a man, right? But you got to understand, as this just said, is that with her being in this psychologically independent state, she, and because of her fear of keeping him from experiencing what his daddy experienced, she don't want him to get hung. She don't want him to get uh, get master of to, uh, to become that belligerent negro, uh, negro that ends up experiencing punishment. So she raises him to be weak, hmm. and because of that, but the, the the slave master said we used to be afraid because we knew how strong the black man was. We knew how powerful he was. We knew that if we if if they were united. How strong black communities, think about doing the movement. You're a little older than I am. So think about doing the movement, how united uh, communities were, were back then. The teachers lived in the neighborhood. The bankers lived in the same neighborhood. The lawyers all lived in the same neighborhood. And it was a, it was a, it was a strength in that neighborhood. It was a pride in that neighborhood. You had James Brown singing songs like, I'm black and I'm proud, say it loud. You had Marvin Gaye singing songs, you know, like, uh, I mean, I mean uh, Sam Cooke singing uh, songs like A Change Is Gonna Come. People were socially conscious, right? There was a movement, and we were all moving in the same direction, right? But because of the ramifications of this letter, now single mothers are in charge. I mean, you got um, black men in prison. You got a divide of the community. You got the Fair Housing Act of 1967 that said we can leave out of our communities. And if we were able financially to move, then we were probably the leaders of the community. And if you take all of the leaders out of the community, you leave the community exposed. 
Tell me, me I'm wrong. Let, let me let me throw a little something in there too okay. in our neighborhood. You know where the real men were? Where the they? winos on the corner. Mm. Because you think about it, back in the day, Doc, when we were growing up, we was kids hanging out in the park and in the streets and everything else. We had respect for them winos. Sure did. Because we found out they had more wisdom and knowledge than you could ever shake a stick at. But they raised, they cha- they exchanged the they exchanged the wino for the crackhead. And the, the, the crackheads ain't never do nothing. Ain't got nothing, you know. In the, but some of them I ain't gonna put all of them in that pot. Mm-hmm. But as I was saying, we learned in growing as little boys as we listened to those older men mm-hmm. because they were men. You a man when you was able to escalate that young man's thinking and yeah. how he was speaking. You presented yourself as a man because you had seen a man in oh, the yeah. past. My daddy, my but daddy. today, what are they saying? And then I can't just pounce on the women and say it's all in. It's not. Because you got to look at them and they said, well, I don't have in my life, I cannot find a man. Who can I trust? Who can I depend on? Everyone I've ran across has misused me. So they're missing a lot right there. And because they're missing what they're missing, they're gonna dismiss. Yeah. Now you said something a minute ago, and I wanna I wanna back I wanna back that thing up right quick. Uh, you said um that p- kid p- kids aren't don't fear their parents. And I wanna I wanna I wanna deal with that word fear. Like I said, when I think of fear, the first fear I think of is respect. Mm. So I, I think the problem is now fear that a lot of parents, a lot of kids, rather than fearing their parents, they're either scared of their parents because the parents are abusive, because the Bible talks about the, the difference between affliction and abuse. You know, it's affliction, you're teaching, but abuse is, you know, you, you, you're tearing down. So I think a lot of parent, kids now are either scared of their parents or just don't respect their parents at all. And because their parents have treated them like friends their whole life. So now, I mean, because I mean, I, I'm, I know I'm dealing, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of parents and, you know, that are literally at odds with their children. Children basically raising mm-hmm. themselves. What do you think about that? Well, you know, then, then look, at, uh, I'm speaking of basically generation. Okay. You're speaking of basically generation X. Mm-hmm. This generation Z now. That's what I'm addressing. They don't have no fear for nobody and okay. nothing. Because mm. look at the shootings that's taking place here the past few days. It's the young 14, 15-year-old boys that are shooting policemen. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what you have to fear. But that generation now, what do they see as a man? It gets weaker and weaker as we go on. Because the disappearance and the dissipation of what a man is is evolving more and more each day. Well, I people, got five dogs. Okay. Five. Now that means, and all of them are grown, but that means I have to deal with and wonder on a daily basis and even pray. I wish they would try to or halfway find a man half the way I am. I believe and I was raised to take care of, Mm -hmm. be responsible, that the man is supposed to do. What they tell me, they can't find none today. Mm -hmm. And I am inclined to believe them because as you look out and you have to sympathize with them, they got to make it on their own. They got to pay them bills on their own because they cannot depend on whomever. Only thing they can depend on whomever is, you know, maybe one or two good nights in the room, you know, outside of that, ain't nothing else left. So they must fend for themselves and do for themselves. But we have to go back and look at and visit this point. Mm -hmm. A woman cannot raise a man. She can't. And this and this and this this is where I want to get to cause what and and we're going and we and John, we know women are doing the best they can. We're not saying it's all their fault. We get all that. But uh but a lot a lot of the fault has been placed on black men and what i what i what i don't want us to forget is that even when the man is absent the job still has to be done Go on. that and that, that's that's my point mm-hmm. and you can't be upset at what you raised no you can't be mad at a at a uh a situation that you helped to create now uh i think and I, i've seen it myself where 
a lot of times mental ceilings are placed in young men's lives because of what the next thing the letter says. The letter says he cannot, talking about the black boy, he cannot get past her early slave molding process. This is what Willie Lynch is saying about the black boy that she's raising. She says he is a good tool now ready to be tied to the horse, uh, now ready to be tied to the horse at a tender age. By the time that boy reaches the age of 16, look at what it says. By the time he reaches the age of 16, he is soundly broken in and ready for a long life of sound and efficient work. This is talking about slavery, y'all, and the reproduction of a unit of good labor force. In other words, we're going to repeat the same process over and over and over again. You're going to get the woman is going to raise this boy to be mentally weak, physically strong, and by the time he's 16 years old, he'll be tied to the horse and uh and he'll be a forever be a a worker on the plantation. So slowly we will destroy the image of what a man should be. And indoctrinate mm-hmm. and create this morphed man. That's what I always call. I call I call what we have now is this morphed man that has been recreated because most of do you realize man there's a certain society segment of society that has never ever really been around real I've been around people where when I was show up with my son that people were super super surprised that a daddy was there mm-hmm. cuz they hadn't seen one and there's a segment of society of young black women and young black men of a certain age that have never really been around black men I'm tell I was at a mall at, at a uh, hotel one night and I was asking the uh I was asking the uh, the uh, hotel person at the hotel if I could use uh, their parking lot because I was I was at a building next door and this girl comes in, young lady comes in and you tell she had been drinking and all of a sudden she called me nigga this and you know N I G D G A this yada 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 and I said who are you talking to and when she heard my voice and the authority authority behind my voice she said oh how old are you I said no matter how old I am I said but since you asked I'm forty eight years old. You don't talk to men like, sweet, sir, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I said, no, your problem is you don't respect men. And I get it because you hadn't been one around one that has deserved respect. But you met me today, and you can't call me nigga. My name is James. How you doing, sweetheart? And I treated her like a young lady, and we ain't had no more issues on that one. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that's the problem is a lot of these young people have never been exposed to real men. What do you think? It's like I said, that's an image that's it dissipates daily. Okay. Uh, because the thing in the understanding is, it's just here recently with all of the Black Lives Matter, not the movement, but the things that were happening, and we begin to learn and open our minds and our eyes and begin to see and realize what time it really is. Mm-hmm. Because it's just been recently that a black woman will admit that when her man goes out there in the streets, <laughs> his life is on the line. Yeah. They're just but, beginning but, to understand the but, plight. But the letter said here long time ago that she does that. She that that was taught in her a long time ago because she was she's afraid of for the young man's life. I mean, that's that's already said that 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 was supposed to be indoctrinated four hundred years ago. That I mean, that's why in in four hundred years ago they saw a man stand up and swallow his pride, and would say, "Well, he answer okay." Swallow his pride? No, he had his dignity taken away. Well, he had his dignity snatched. He didn't have a choice in the matter. But what pride? Understand what I'm saying? Okay, a man. Because, see, a real man knows when to hold and when to fold. Okay. Young people say, well, I would never have done or did this. If master put that whip on your back, you know, it's easy to talk when you ain't never felt the pain. Mm-hmm. But when you felt the pain, and the men of the yesterday, they paved the way by being real men and standing up and taking, regardless what was driven or given to them and still make a family a home or whatever. Yeah. Then let me bring out this fact too okay. that we don't like to talk about. Also, how many of us would really admit 
that a lot of the men that raised us weren't really our dads. So I can't even relate to that. One. But we had men back in them days that stepped up. That they, exactly. Yeah. And they would take a woman and her children and raise them children like they were his own. Yeah. And, 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 let's, and let's not discount the fact that most of the history that we learned was his story. Hmm. Because now mm -hmm. we're learning that how much our story was discounted and left out, right? Mm -hmm. Because we had black men that they leave out the fact that the slaves that fought back. <laughs> they leave out the fact how the Black Panther said you ain't coming up in here with all that, you know, all that stuff. And because and whenever a black man had influence and his influence was enough to organize, he was automatically considered to be a threat. Yeah. Because and that's what the thing said. That's why they couldn't sleep. That's why they didn't want you educated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but remember what he said? What, what, what I say? What I say on this one? That they know she'll stand guard. They, they said now we can sleep soundly because we know that a woman's gonna stand guard for us. Mm. In other words, we put her in place and given her all of the necessary tools if she uses them. Now all black women don't use that. Let me understand that. But if she uses her tools properly according to them. She's going to eff effectively destroy a generation because he'll only think to a point and he'll stop at a certain point and he'll only work at a certain type of job and he'll always have a mental ceiling and he'll always be dependent on his mama. Because the women were indoctrinated and told that the only thing he needed was a job. As long as he had a job. Black women did not go along with a black man saying, I want to start my Bruh, own business. You are. And, that, and that's you, the thing. That, that's that's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Because the they, they wanted the security but of what's that paycheck. But, what, but watch this. But corporate America is hiring black women. The government hires black women. Right? Me, I never will forget, man. One of my big, one of my, one of my biggest arguments. I don't tell a lot about my marriage. One of my biggest arguments was uh, when about the job that I worked and all this stuff. And, and, and I, I ain't gonna lie, I worked a job I hated for years. Mm. Just because I wanted my wife to be happy. Mm -hmm. I ain't make when money I there. I was, I didn't make what man. I was stressed every day, mm. but I worked every day to uh to uh because I was trying to appease her. I'm an entrepreneur by nature. I go buy a shirt. Seven dollars instead of twenty dollars. So some of that influence was whooping on you too. Yeah. <laughs> but I was raised by my daddy because I watched my mm -hmm. daddy do the same thing, mm -hmm. and my daddy hustles. Now my family hustle. We just just hustled, and so I I you know I, best example I heard was one girl came into the dealership one time, and I asked her. I said I said, what did your husband do for a living? She said, well, he make things happen. Mm -hmm. And that and when you get a woman that gets your back enough to say. He might not have a job, but he but I can make sure he's gonna come up with what, what I need by the end of the month. And most women aren't no, nah, if you ain't got no job, that's the first thing they try and do is put you out. Because women, one of their love languages is security. And they don't see the security because they're in a fro. Some of them, not all of them, let me sisters, I'm not putting this on everybody, but some of them are in a frozen independent state. And because in this frozen independent state, then as they raise children, they raise him with the fear of what might happen instead of what instead of preparing him oh that's good they they raise him with the fear of what might happen instead of preparing him for whatever happens perpetual cycle yeah that's what it is all right so uh we, we we're in the next last five minutes so because several things happen when black women because that's what's happened when black men in prison uh some have you know, chosen alternate lifestyles, all these different types of things. And all those things have uh, uh, directly and indirectly uh, affected the black family. And what happens is when black men and black women separate, then we have a divided family. And when we have a divided family, we in turn have a divided community. Would you agree with that? I agree with that 100%. All That's right. where we are today. That's where we are now. We have a divided community. In all racial, ethnic groups of, of all the racial ethnic groups and marriages and divorce, here's a statistic. It says black women are the only one that had a higher divorce rate than marriage rate. They got they got uh, divorced at a higher rate than they did at marriage rate. Nearly 31 divorces per 1,000 divorces and of uh, 15 and older, and 17 marriages per 1,000 unmarried women. That's not good. That that's that's showing you right there 
that the fam that, that the familial structure that we are accustomed to is it's kind of like baseball, John. When you get in the bat and when you get in the batter's box and you know he's bringing ninety five to ninety eight, you're gonna get all the way in the batter's box and you're gonna try your best to uh, kick that dust to the side so it looks like you so you can get as deep as you can so you can see the pitch as long as you can, right? So uh, that that that's what's going on now is that the adjustment that people are making to what used to be is they're starting to kick that line to the side. They're trying to kick the, that batter's box so they can stand wherever they want to in the box, right? And uh, and, and think that it's cool. But no, nah, it, it's it's destroying the family because if people don't get married, then what happens? Now, it's no, now you don't have two-parent homes. Less babies are being made. It's starting to depopulate the earth. And that's where we are right now. Am I? Would you agree? Exactly. When you change us into a materialistic people, then what more can we expect? We were growing up on, in the past. We didn't know exactly what daddy did. Mm -hmm. But we knew when we came in from playing, the lights was on. We had a place to go, a place to sleep. We had some food on the table. We didn't know what all he had to go through to provide and do that. Mm -hmm. Because that was back during the day when a lot of the women stayed at home and raised the children. And the man got out and did. But society has changed so much and differed from that to now. And I like to ask the question okay. to a lot of the 30 and up crowd. That's good, though. What did your mama and daddy do that was so wrong wow. to where you feel like you cannot and will not raise your children that the way. way you were raised? That's bad. That's interesting. That's a good question. Now, that's, that's a question. You know, question. what was it so wrong? You know, there's no such thing as a perfect parent mm -hmm. because when that child come out the womb, they don't come out with an instruction booklet. Wow. We've all, and we all going to make some mistakes in so raising our children. But our number one responsibility, what a parent should be doing is trying to instill in their child from day one, becoming independent. That's what it is. Not dependent, but independent. But the, but the men today are dependent. And that's what that's what Willie said would happen. Well, that's what it, they it, wanted to it, do. It, it reversed the roles. The woman raised the boy, the male to be dependent, and the female to be independent. It, re, it reversed the role. Hey, listen, we, we're uh, it's ten twenty nine, so we only got about a minute left on the show. Uh, thank everybody for listening. We're gonna we, uh, we're gonna continue this subject next week, Tuck. I'll check check what you see what your schedule look like, and uh, we, we're gonna we're gonna get back on this subject because I, I've not gotten halfway through what I need to talk about. But I wanna if you uh, I wanna uh, I wanna I wanna leave on some rhetorical questions, and we'll answer those questions next week. And perhaps if someone's listening and they want to inbox me or perhaps answer the question on here, that'd be great. Whatever. Uh, but uh. Uh, three three rhetorical questions that I want to ask. Uh, first question is, why are people so comfortable settling for divorce? That's mm -hmm. the first question. Uh, the second question I want to ask uh, is, why are people comfortable being single and content with dying alone? Uh, mm -hmm. And the third question is, where did the attitude, uh, when did the attitude that I don't need a man become so prevalent? Mm -hmm. Those are three questions that I want to ask. Disco is about to give me my outro music, and uh, but uh, I want uh, I want us to uh, like I said, I want to consider these things. John, you asked a good question. You said, "What is the solution?" I think the solution is two things: I think it's reconciliation, and I think it's going to be re uh, restructuring. Black men and black women got to reconcile. We got to tell each other we're sorry, and then we got to restructure. We got to get back to two parent homes. We got to get back to positive role models and mentors and things like that. So I've enjoyed the conversation, Tuck. Thank you for coming in tonight, my friend. I know it's late for an old man, but you came on and hung out with me tonight, and I appreciate that. Uh, listen, the world has changed. It is. Why do you remain the same? We'll talk to you next week. Quick shout out. Today's my anniversary. Happy 38 anniversary years. Y'all tell Tuck happy 38 so year I anniversary. Can go home to a peaceful home. Exactly. So what he's <laughs> saying, you, he's in a successful marriage. So he can talk. He's qualified to talk. All right. Check y'all out next week. Listen, we're on the path to better.